Whenever you talk about live streaming or data streaming, it could be seen as a river with water flowing down the stream. But instead of water, there's data going down the river. Now this stream has a certain flow rate depending on what's going on or what you want to do with data. For example, if there's a storm, you would have a really high flow rate. And when there hasn't been a lot of rain, the flow rate will be pretty low. By default, the frame rate is usually set to around 30 frames a second, which could be used for basic video recording. When you lower the frame rate to around 1 to 5 frames per second, this is usually used for uh, time lapse. And when you set the frame rate to around 120 frames per second or higher, this could be used for slow motion videos. Streaming images could be really helpful when it comes to computer vision or object recognition. When you want to take the matrix and feed it through some tensor to detect an object within the picture. Or when you want instant access to whatever is in the frame. For now, I'll show you how to set up an image stream that could be used in any of these scenarios. We'll start off by adding three dependencies. Get for state management, the camera and image plugin as well. Then we're going to have to remove all of the boilerplate code that comes with your default Flutter app. Next, we're going to have to use the Get Material app for our state management. If you're not that familiar with the Get package, any other state management like provider could also be used. Next up, we're going to have to create a new file called Global Bindings, which will connect our UI layer to our controller. For the UI layer, we'll create a directory called Camera. And inside we'll have all of our camera widgets like the camera viewer and also just the camera screen. For now, I'll just create a basic camera screen stateless widget with nothing in and so that I could just import it as the home widget for the get material app. Then I'll create a title. Let's call it camera app and also the initial binding, set it to the global bindings. Within the global bindings, I'll create a global bindings class that extends bindings. You'll have to override the dependencies and lazy put a scan controller once the app is loaded. Next, import the global bindings within your main file so that we could start creating our camera. As you can see, we just have a blank screen at this moment. And let's also just remove this debug banner at the top right corner. Now let's go to the package website and see how to initiate the camera plugin. Because we're using GetX controller and not the stateful widget, we'll have to make some changes and adjust accordingly. In the camera screen, we'll have to wrap the camera widgets with a GetX builder that will listen to a Boolean set to true once the controller has been initialized. Now within the controller, let's create this Rx boolean called is initialized and let's set it by default to false. With that, we also need to create a getter that we could use in our UI layer. For starters, within the GetX controller, we'll have to override the onInit method and initialize the camera within this method. In the documentation, we could also see how it would be initialized. So we could copy the code and paste it within the initializing function.
So before initializing the camera, you have to find the available camera sensors within your device. This will usually be a list of two to five cameras, depending on your phone model. For example, zero would always be your main camera sensor. One would always be your front camera sensor. And then two to three would be a telephoto or a wide angle if your phone supports it. We also create a getter for the camera controller so that we could put it inside the camera preview widget. Also copy the strings required to give access to your camera depending on the platform that you're using. By now you can install the app but all you would see is just a blank screen as we haven't actually set the boolean to true once the controller has been initialized. Also wrap your camera widget with the sized box and set it to the width and height of your device. Now we actually want to add an extra layer to now we actually want to add an extra layer on top of the camera screen. So let's create a separate widget called the camera viewer where we will put our camera preview widget. So once the camera controller has been initialized, set the is initialized boolean to true. Now, as you can see, the camera is initialized and we can see it over the whole screen. What we want to do now is create a separate button to actually capture the images in the stream. For this, we'll create a new file called capture button where we'll put the widget for the button to take our images. We'll call the widget capture button which will only be a container wrapped within a gesture detector, wrapped within a position widget to position it at the bottom of our screen. So once the button is pressed, we will call the function called capture, which we create within our scan controller. 
this function will basically take whatever frame is detected in that specific time and add it to a list. Before we do that, we actually have to initialize the stream. So once our camera controller is initialized, we start the stream. So to demonstrate, I'll print out the epoch time whenever an image is returned from the camera. You see this is pretty fast because it's running at around 30 frames per second. Now let's create our camera image variable that would be set to the image in the stream. Once that's done, we'll import the image package and use it to convert our BGRA image format to a JPEG. Next, we'll take that byte array and set it to our image byte variable. As you can see, all I'm printing out now is the amount of bytes within the array of the JPEG image. Next, we'll create an Rx list. This is where we will add our image bytes whenever we tap the shutter button. Now let's create a top image viewer widget that will display all the widgets within that list. Again, wrap the widget with a GitX builder. This will refresh the widget tree whenever something is added to the list. We'll create a list view boulder with a horizontal axis that's set to the count of the list. As you can see, whenever we tap the capture button, the image in that particular time is added to the list. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope you learned something today. And if you like these videos and want some more content, please like and subscribe to this channel. Catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.